Welcome to Above the Garage. Hi, friends. Welcome to our discussion of Presumed Innocent, Episode 7. Let's do our round of introductions and dive in. Hi, I'm Rachel. Hi, I'm Helen. Hi, I'm Violet. Hi, I'm Kimberly. And I'm Kate. So this episode is entitled The Witness, and once again, directed by Greg Utanis and cinematography by Doug Emmett. I was excited to hear Rusty's voice so garbled as it kicked off, since who else could that be but Raymond's hearing? So he lives. Thank God. Bill Camp is too important to the show to die with two episodes left. The picture comes on as the stretcher hits the ground. Raymond's being rushed through the hospital, but he's breathing, at first at least. Lots of medical jargon until the very clear they lost his pulse. And they're giving him CPR again. The professionals this time, at least. I find it a very odd choice that Barbara is at home with the kids instead of Rusty being home with the kids and her being here with her friend Lo. But I guess Rusty and Raymond's friendship trumps Lo and Barbara's. Mm. The whole cast of clowns from court is here. Not awkward at all. Nico and Tommy across from Rusty and Maya. We learn from Rusty's phone call with Barbara that Raymond's in surgery. And also we see the kids watching the news where everybody's wondering what we are. What's going to happen to the case now? Mistrial seems like one of the more likely outcomes from the get-go. Kyle is very displeased by the idea of having to do it all over again, and the scene ends on a shot of his face, looking quite stressed. I feel like throughout the show there's been extra focus, though very subtle, on Kyle's reactions to things and watching the news obsessively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But maybe I'm mistaken, and if you were watching it for, like, anybody, you would see that, you know? I agree. I do feel like if you go through a few different people that you feel like are a little more in the background, you can find moments where it's like, why are they focusing on them right here? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I've noticed that with several characters, actually. Mm -hmm. I also have to go back and just uh, applaud your uh, phrasing cast of clowns. That's pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) I like alliterations. Accurate and good. I was like, why is Nico here? What is he doing here? I know. Maybe it's for like public appearance. Yeah, I'm sure. And maybe they care a little. They do care. I think he does. They do care. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting because obviously on the outside, they all hate each other, but maybe deep down they're still, you know, they'd still be upset if they died. So (laughs) that's good to know. They still know each other. I don't know. Yeah. Like law school colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. They've worked with Raymond for a long time. And and. Nico even has that amazing quote from Raymond later in the episode that we'll get to. So I, at first I was surprised too that they were there, but I guess if you think about the fact that they're colleagues and they've worked together a long time, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. I think that even if you have somewhat of a bad history with people, you still have a history with them. You know, there's still people in your life yeah. that if they disappear, it's weird. And I also think they like Raymond a lot more than Rusty. I'm not sure they would care as much if Rusty were dying right now. Yeah, I think so too. That's true. Mm -hmm. However, I still think it's super fucked up that Lo doesn't have anybody, you know? She's probably very exasperated with every single person in this room at this point, and they're the only people there to comfort her. That's true, yeah. It sucks. It does seem like they've all sort of dropped their animosity, like it was easy to just let everything go and be like, well, we're all here together, supporting each other and stuff. Which is nice. Yeah. We've never seen or heard that they have kids either right Raymond and Lorraine Mm -mm. no no I imagine they'd be grown if they did I hope they do yeah I don't know why but (laughs) yeah we have not yeah but Lo obviously doesn't care once the doctor comes out and gives her the most amazing news her husband's okay in fact totally fine it was an electrical issue he just needed a pacemaker and now he'll be even healthier and safer Elizabeth Marvel's performance here was so amazing because you can just like feel in that moment of her euphoric shock and almost disbelief that she was sure he was dead yeah yeah Yeah. and she didn't like dare hope for anything close to him being okay much less going home with her soon totally fine Mm -hmm. yeah she kind of asked it twice in a row like she's yeah he's okay he's okay yeah (laughs) right right it wasn't on her likely outcomes at all you know i mean his heart stops yeah he was legitimately dead not yeah at least twice because we we heard them say that he had no pulse at the end of the last episode. And then they had to have revived him to get him to the hospital. And then they were doing CPR on him at the hospital. Right, he lost it at the hospital too. Yeah, so that's horrifying. She probably truly thought he was gone. Right. Yeah, I mean, her reaction makes sense, but her performance was just incredible to watch and very hard to look away. Absolutely. I find it interesting that Rusty was caring for Lo, bringing her water and just being there. And Tommy was like, if I can, any way I can help, like, please tell me, how can I help you in this situation? Mm. You figure it out. Yeah. Do the work for me. Do the yeah. work for me. Do the thinking. And Rusty was just doing. So that was what 
I noticed. Right, right. Which is probably just, you know, very, uh, not very important, but still. Yeah, he was really sweet with her in the scene. Like, I feel like a lot of scenes, if you see him interacting with people and you're not thinking about, like, what's actually going on, you're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> he is charming. Yeah. Everyone seems legitimately relieved at the hospital, but in the car on the way home, Nico's freaking out. He thinks Raymond's heart attack may have actually turned the case in Rusty's favor. He just saved a man's life in front of the jury. He'll be a hero in their eyes now. Very quick aside, but I just want to say I was at dinner with friends about a month ago, and my friend Chris did exactly that for a man in the restaurant who had no pulse, and she brought him back with CPR, and it was crazy. It was insane. Like, the whole restaurant is just watching her, like, bring this man back to life, and then we're expected to, like, continue our meal. It was was an insane situation, and I was, like, so proud of her, and she's a hero in my eyes, so I totally get it. That's why everyone out there listening, PSA, go do a CPR course. Seriously, like nobody else. Very important. I mean, she was there before I even realized what was going on. But some guy kept yelling, like, is there a doctor? Is there a doctor? And he, I mean, she's a nurse practitioner and she was too busy to like respond to him. But nobody else, you know, got up. So, yes, do CPR. People should know that. If you've seen The Office, do the Michael Scott, uh, uh. Uh, uh, yeah. staying alive, staying alive. Is that where it came from? Because that's what I have in my head as what yeah. you should do it to. Oh, it's actually a real, a real thing. Yeah, it's the correct beat, right? Yeah, it's the correct beat. It's like uh, one hundred per, per minute, I think. Yeah, I mean that's so great, though. I'm ha- I'm grateful to him then for putting that in my head because otherwise I would have no idea. But then he starts singing the rest of the song, and the lady's like, "No, no, not that part. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. just that one spot." <laughs> you can tell by the way I'm. <laughs> what were you going to say, Helen? I wanted to ask you guys if you're required to do a CPR course when you're doing a driver's uh, license. No. No. Because it's a requirement in Germany, you have to go. Oh, wow. wow. That's great. Smart. Like you do, not like a CPR, but like uh, acute help. How do you call it? Like first help. like First aid. First aid. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good idea. So so you learn how, how to carry someone out of the car without oh, wow. compromising their neck or stuff like that. So it's everything you have to do. Wow. Um, yeah. Definitely not here, but that's really smart. Such a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I did take a CPR course once when I was having kids because it's different, you know, with babies. And then again, I don't know when, but it was like a regular like adult course. Mm-hmm. And still like I would really struggle to do it confidently at this point. So... Mm. Definitely need a refresher. Back to the show. Nico is sure they need to move for a mistrial if they're going to win this thing, and Tommy wholeheartedly disagrees. He still thinks they're winning the case and tells Nico to trust the jury. I liked Nico's line. It was something like, um, he's a pretty charming guy as far as cheating psychopaths go, or something like that. (laughs) Yeah. And I think um, Tommy pointed out, if we do it all over again, he'll know our hand. Like, they've already shown all their bag of tricks, and if they start all over again, that, that, I guess, gives the defense... An advantage? Or- yeah. yeah. Right. If it's a mistrial, do they get a new jury? Yeah. 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 So the jury wouldn't know. Right. Rusty's watching the news that night. Everyone's speculating on what happens for the trial now. And Barbara's watching Rusty from the hall, shaking her head as the scene ends. Unsure exactly what that silent communication was. How did you guys read that look between them? Mm, that was something I was also like asking myself, like, what does this supposed to mean? I wasn't sure. I don't have an answer. Yeah, there was a lot of looks from Barbara this episode, actually. She wasn't really in it as much as previous ones, uh, um, not as many uh, lines, but yeah, there were a lot of looks. I think she probably did it because nobody suspects her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just noticed they're uh, not communicating this episode. That's true. They're almost not talking or like polite exchanges. Right. Yeah, it's very terse. Yeah. That's a very good point. They really aren't talking much. The next day, Rusty and Maya apparently unluckily hit the elevator bay at the exact same moment as Nico and Tommy, so they're riding up to see the judge together. It'd be funny if the elevator broke for a few hours. (laughs) Quick bottle episode. Yeah, that'd be amazing. All of them stuck in the elevator together. Do you guys think about an elevator breaking before you get in, like, an overfull elevator? Yes. Yes. If it's hot, particularly. Only when it's hot. Only in the summer. That's one of my worst, uh, worst fears is an elevator breaking down. But you've never, it's never happened, right? Yes, it has. Oh, it has. Mm, oh, it did. Oh. But I was with my dad and Pops. I was with dad and Pops and they both pried it open. Oh, <gasps> wow. wow. You're superheroes. That's so cute. <laughs> Pop with his little skinny arms. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you weren't stuck between floors or anything, were you? No, I must not have been. It was just obviously, yeah. And you had to like climb up. Yeah, that was lucky. <laughs> Somebody did that at my office. They climbed, they were stuck between floors and they climbed up, which is like insanely dangerous and stupid, but oh, yeah, that's crazy. That's it. Yeah. I, I worry about getting stuck in elevators. I won't get on like a really crowded elevator unless I have to. In the judge's chamber, she's taking their tips and Nico tries some word salad legal jargon before Rusty shuts him up and Nico gets to the point. He wants a mistrial. Maya and Rusty object. Maya wants to take over immediately, but then Kimberly for the win here. She saw it coming last episode. Yep. Mm -hmm. Rusty would like to represent himself. Pride goeth before the fall, Rusty. Also, is this scene where the judge even called Nico delay? Delay! Yes! Okay. Maybe she did. I didn't hear it, but maybe she did. She did. You guys, I am confident now because of the of his reaction both times and because she literally says, Mr. Delay Guardia, you certainly seem cognitively overdue. And I was like, yeah, okay, she, okay, that was intentional. All right. No, I like it better that she that she said it. Yeah, uh, she did. Because his, his actual name is De La. So right. it's, it was very clearly Delay. It was very funny. The subtitles said it too. Yeah. Well, that's his nickname, right? Yeah. Just before we get too far away from it, the word salad, legal word salad. Yeah. I like, yeah. laughed out loud at that reaction <laughs> at Rusty yeah. Lake. What the fuck like, are you talking about? What the fuck about? are you talking about? We left law school years ago. And then he like explains it. He's like, well, just, just say, say that, that. then. <laughs> right. Rusty is, Rusty is all of us right now. <laughs> We're like, what is happening? For yeah. sure. <laughs> well, he, he like has to be so fancy about yeah. it. Plus it is causing a delay. Just, just a delay. in that yeah. moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> One little thing I like that the elevator sound, um, the floor sound that the elevator yeah. made sounded like a BP machine, like in the hospital. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So I immediately thought of Raymond in that moment. Oh, like he was there with them in spirit. Yeah. There were a lot of cool sounds in this episode and I meant to write them down more and I didn't, but... The sounds in this episode are really great. That's a good one. Yeah, the music music and the sound. Later on, the music is so good. Yeah. All right. Tommy and Nico are up in arms because they can see what Rusty wants to do here, show his sunny personality to the jury, slip in some of his opinions perhaps, and not have to be cross-examined. The judge can't stop him from representing himself, but she warns him if he even begins to give his version of events, she will subject him to cross-examination. She warns him one last time it's a bad idea, and he has until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning to change his mind. I was pissed for Maya here, yeah. like the way Rusty kind of said to her, Slipped like, in. well, I have more experience than you. Like, obviously <laughs> she has more experience, but like, he's going to represent himself. Like, I knew he was going to do that. He's such like, uh-huh. would I say it is the right word? Narcissist? Narcissist? Yeah. 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 Uh, he thinks he's the best for the job, I guess. He thinks that he will be the one to be able to do it. And I mean, obviously he's very experienced, but I don't know. I just felt kind of there for her there. Well, and she's been so good at her job this whole time. Like, she's gotten really good stuff when she's been the one speaking. So he should trust that she can help and knows the case really well. Right. She's good, but I don't know that he's always felt like she's been in his corner the same way Raymond had. Even though Raymond will tell him straight to his face when he thinks, you know, he's... You know, his behavior's off or he looks really guilty or whatever. But in in like deep down, I think Raymond still believes he's innocent. But it shouldn't matter though, right? Because she's so professional about it. She is. Right. I think it's better to have someone that's not emotional doing it. It's kind of better. Yeah. yeah. She wants to win the case. It's still, you know. Right. Michael's dad is furious. In his mind, the murderer of the child's mother will now be questioning his son. Rusty's kids are terrified. Barbara tells him to have faith in their dad in that room, courtroom. Just not the bedrooms. In the bathroom before the trial, Rusty and Tommy have a little moment just hanging out in the mirror. Two possible murderers staring back at us, but who actually done it? I just wrote awkward. This feels extremely awkward. <laughs> yeah, but they chose to like drag it out. I don't know. He was just in there to wash his hands. <laughs> he didn't really have to stay. I know. I was waiting for him to like whip it out and then it'd be more <laughs> awkward. But The only comment I had on this scene was that I just feel like We've talked a lot about kind of the realism of the show and that courtroom bathroom was so freaking realistically shitty. Yeah. <laughs> it just felt like the exact level of, you know, that like chemically lead paint smell that was just coming off the screen that I was like, oh, I feel like I'm there right now. Right. And yeah. those old court buildings that just have that like kind of gross stale smell to them. Yeah. I wonder if they built this set 
or if they use a courthouse. Like in your honor, the showrunner told us that they built the set because it's really hard to use a courtroom because you can basically only do it on Sundays. Mm. But like, I'm really surprised there isn't a court building in LA that's used for yeah. multiple <laughs> shows. Like, that's obviously not how it works, but huh, yeah. it's all interesting. I'm always interested in how it's done behind the scenes. If they did build it, it's very realistic looking. This one in particular looks very... But yeah, exactly. I mean, they're good at that. So Anyway, apparently Rusty's bathroom hangout was actually occurring after he was due in court. Ballsy to make both the judge and Carolyn's certainly nervous son wait longer than they should have to. Seriously. I was like, bro. bro. Yeah, and it couldn't have made a good impression on the jury. Like, that's their first impression of you, well, really, in person at all. Yeah. Did we skip over the part i can't i think it was right before this where rusty's having the like vision of carolyn yeah mm. that happened before it's like a weird yeah, he was in bed, dark right? room and yeah and yeah. she's like walking up to him the only thing that i thought was weird and i'm not really sure if it means anything again like half the things that happen with rusty right is where they're, they're like interacting and then she walks up and touches his face and he's like stop and like stop. jumps back from her mm -hmm. so i don't know what that meant it was interesting plus it was an interesting setting for it because it was dream it was in a dream i think but we haven't seen him have dreams like that where it's like a big dark room and it's sort of abstract in a way right it was mixed with real things she's haunting him sort of maybe or oh yeah that could make sense and he was not actually i think he was awake too i think he was just like laying in bed awake the first time i thought he was awake but then he seemed to start when he said stop stop he seemed to wake up yeah you're right but yeah, that was interesting because I think all other flashes we've seen before have been an actual moment in time that he's either dreaming about remembering or something, or maybe even misremembering because we, we've seen different versions of things. But this was different. It was like, I don't know, it, was, it just felt different. Yeah. The haunting him is a, is a good thought, though. That might yeah. be why she, he said stop like that, because it was like not a real, it wasn't a memory. It was him just being like, yeah, stop being in my head all the time. Yeah, right. In the courtroom, Rusty opens with his deepest condolences, which Michael cuts off promptly with, you killed my mother. I like Michael. Rusty doesn't dilly-dally anymore. Instead, he dives right into the poor kid's heart with a scalpel, grilling him on why his mom wanted nothing to do with him. Did she ever tell him why? Did his dad? Nope. And thus, Michael was angry, and we now learn Rusty wasn't the only one sending Carolyn angry text messages in the final weeks of her life. Her son was, too. And they show the jury some choice ones. First of all, he's got her in his phone as piece of shit mom which I think is fair considering. And then unfortunately it would be easier if you were dead, which isn't great optics for his situation, but it's also like just true. It wouldn't hurt and confuse him so much if she wasn't in his life because she had died, not just because she's choosing to be an absent mother. Alas, it's an unfortunate text to send to someone who was not dead then and is in fact dead now. Mm. They cut to Raymond in the hospital occasionally with Lo at his side, of course, trying to keep him from getting riled up. Among other things, I think Raymond's worried that Rusty's going to go too hard on the kid for the jury's liking. Mm -hmm. And then they start discussing the video from that night and that Michael went back to his dad's house after he took the video. So Rusty points out that Michael's only alibi is his father and vice versa. And oh, there was evidence on his computer showing his keen interest in his mother's cases. So now we know how mm -hmm. Michael and his father might have known about how to hogtie Carolyn to make it look like Bonnie Davis. Very important information. Mm -hmm. And on top of all that, his dad flips the fuck out. So all good stuff for Rusty. Mm. To be fair, though, like if I was someone's dad and I was my son was being questioned like that, I'd probably do the exact same thing. Yeah. I think it's a normal reaction, to be honest. Of course. I agree. Yeah, it's it's a, another one of those things can be seen from multiple perspectives, depending on the truth or how you look at it. Honestly, I didn't find it notable at all until they talked about it later being that notable that he got like angry. But like yeah. you said, Kimberly, it was completely like a normal expected reaction to me. And he didn't, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, punch anybody. So it didn't. Unlike Rusty. <laughs> didn't throw me the way they think that it did. Yeah. The way that Rusty opened and he's like, hello, Michael. I was like, wow, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was creepy and also like kind of entitled and shitty when he was like, sorry for the delay or whatever. Sorry mm -hmm. for my tardiness. Tardiness, yeah. His attitude didn't appeal to me if I was a juror. No. He didn't seem sorry. He seemed like he was thought he was entitled. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, the thing I noticed in the interrogation was that Michael was actually skillfully avoiding answering certain questions. Mm -hmm. Like instead of answering why Carolyn didn't want him in his life, he said, uh, really, she never told me. Yeah. And later on, uh, Rusty asks if Michael had told his father that Rusty was at his mother's house. 
And Michael says, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So this was like, you know, he's avoiding certain situations that were maybe, I don't know, may work against him. Yep. Mm -hmm. So instead of answering, he's uh, he's becoming very accusative towards Rusty. So he's choosing to uh, be aggressive. And I don't know, in, in my feeling, like kind of impress the judges or put the impression at the judges of how angry he is. And also that Rusty is guilty. Is guilty. Yeah. yeah. Any opportunity he has, he says, you killed my mother. Mm. Right. It, it is my impression. <laughs> <laughs> I had the thought of episode five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was also very skillful. It was. I don't know, makes me think that he not only researched Carolyn's cases, but he probably prepared to testify and sure. learn some tips how to direct conversation or how to answer certain questions uh, to avoid answering them, but pointing the finger at Rusty. It works so well for him being a kid, too, because it's like, yeah, it just reads as emotional and distressed. Yeah. But mm. really, like you're saying, when you analyze it, you can see that he was there were particular things that he was diverting or not fully answering uh-huh. while other things he was. So, yeah, that's really interesting. Do we know, did Rusty say when internet web searches of previous or other mm. true crime cases or Bunny Davis, was that done? Did, do we know when those searches were made? I don't think we do. I don't think so. Okay. That would be interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because they can know that, right? They know when you you did searches. So yeah. like if it was any time around the night. Of... It was the night off. I think Rusty would have probably brought that in, made sure everyone knows about it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Honestly, at the end, I have three things. I wrote three things that haven't come up that have to the same date. Kyle's bike, mm-hmm. like they haven't even talked about in court or anything. And then the right. tracker mm-hmm. in the glove compartment has not been addressed. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. All those things have to be. I wonder if the finale will be extra long Longer? or something. To, yeah. Yeah. Cover all that. Yeah, it would be nice. I was actually really annoyed when Michael didn't answer. Like, if he actually genuinely doesn't know that why his mom basically disowned him, then fair enough. But I was like, oh, yes, that question. I want to know. And then there was no answer to it. Just because we want to know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn it. I don't think he should for reasons of the show, but I agree. Like, I really was excited, too, because I wanted to know. Yeah. (laughs) And I thought he was about to reveal something. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're ever going to know, right? I think that it was our chance. I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe in the next episode. It seems like it might be relevant, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I like the shot of Rusty walking out to the car with all the black umbrellas on either side as he and Barbara make their way to the car under their own black umbrellas. The mood was excellent. Mm -hmm. This episode was, again, it was darker in scenes. Like (laughs) in one thing, I was like, wow, I have no idea what's going on. (laughs) (laughs) But I don't know if we've shouted this out yet, but just the scenes of Chicago alone, like from the sky. I know. The tilting shots. Tilting shots with the music. I love those shots. 100%. There's so many shots, too, that are directly vertically up, like from the ground, but just Mm. straight up into the air. There was one episode in particular where there was multiple shots just straight up looking at skyscrapers. They're just really striking. Yeah, it's very like disorienting in this one in a great way. Yeah, and paired with the music, it's just like, ooh. Mm. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Creepy intense. Yeah. It's like an episode where you realize you're holding your breath in certain scenes and stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Speaking of tense, inside the car, Barbara looks unhappy and Rusty's wiping rain off his face. That kind of makes it look like he's wiping tears. More water. So much water imagery in this show. Meanwhile, Nico thinks they're fucked. Summarizes it nicely. Rusty established that someone who hated Carolyn was at the scene who also may have known the details about the Bunny Davis case. And that guy's dad went psycho. So did anyone get Nico's um, Raymond quote about how Raymond had said they're medium rare fuck. Yeah. yeah. Well done fuck. It was very funny. And he had a lot. I didn't get all of them, but it was so great. And I just, I love that he was quoting Raymond here and it's such a Raymond thing to say. And he says, we're well done beyond a reasonable doubt fucked. Yeah. Yep. That was great. <laughs> he delivered that really well, I thought. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. I really liked that a lot. I gotta say, it was like OT's best episode. It was. Yeah. Agree. I agree. He slayed in every scene. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. And I like also the phrasing of, what, what do we do now? We, we're ego. Like he used Rigo's name as a verb. We Rigo. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. That was good. And he thinks she doesn't hate him as much as she hates Tommy, but Nico's the one in a previous episode that was threatening her that he plays poker with her union boss. So I doubt that endeared him to her very much. Oh, yeah. Although I think it's, to be fair, like, Tommy's really very unlikable, and I think, like, Nico seems also kind of unlikable, but Tommy's, like, in the trash. Like, way more unlikable. <laughs> if you had to bear with one of them, you'd, you'd have to go with the other one. Yeah, bear with. <laughs> yeah, bear with. Agreed. Yeah, I would hang out with Nico over Tommy, I think, at this point. Tommy looks like he's going to murder you, whether he is or not. He just looks like it. He's thinking about it, at least. He reminds me more and more of um, Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah. God. The creepiest guy ever. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I guess this was his Rigo strategy all along, right? From the get-go? To get Rusty to defend himself through her. Do you guys feel like that was the strategy all along, or he just got lucky? I think he got lucky. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know. The way that they, like, looked at each other, like, afterward. Well, we'll get there, but it didn't. Oh, they were definitely smug about it. It looked like they were aiming for that, and they got it, as opposed to just surprised they got it. Mm. Yeah. I do wonder if uh, Rigo will be more of a presence in the last episode, because I feel like the last couple, she hasn't really been in it really, right? And I thought that would be more of a more of a thing. Yeah, I think we asked, where'd she go? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if like maybe Rigo specifically wasn't a strategy to get him to testify, but just in general, they were, you know, they were, that was their goal, I'm sure. For sure. Everything they were doing. So even right. if it wasn't specifically about her, I think they were just like, yes, we got him finally. We're like, we've been aiming for this and we got it. I'm just interested in how smart they were if they really had, you know, planned it that well i guess but we'll never know it's also confusing because it seems like rusty's goal is the same as their goal in a way Mm -hmm. i feel like he does kind of want to end up testifying yeah because of his ego that's why she and she asks him that maya asks him that later right yeah because he's too smart to just slip on that i mean that i think that was deliberate too you would think so but he regrets it later he seems to regret it later at least that's true in front of barb so i don't know it's hard to say Obviously, they want you to wonder that, too, because Maya asks him that straight up. I don't know what I can and can't trust when Rusty seems this or that. So Right. Maybe it was like a momentary, again, narcissism or arrogance coming out while he's in right. the place that makes him like so bold and feel so arrogant. Feel like that. Yeah. He's already stepped up to defend himself. So he's taking control of that narrative. And then to take control of the narrative even, even further, he wants himself on the stand so he can get his story out on record that he he thinks needs to be under oath and his own testimony. And I think the narcissism goes as far as that, where like, I need to take full control of this whole trial right. to save myself. Yeah, I just wonder if like when he's not in the courtroom, that's when he, like Kate was saying, he kind of has that moment of like, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Right. Because okay. he's not as arrogant out of that room. It's not the same mentality. Yeah. Did the, you also say that was in front of Barbara? Yeah. Because I just wonder whose benefit it's for. Like if it's in front of someone else, if it's for her benefit or if it's how he really feels. But yeah, it could be for her. I think he also says it to Maya on the phone though, right? He says like, anyway, we can get to that. But I question that too. You were right. You were right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. The next scene was surprising for me. Not the torrential downpour, of course. That's par for the course. But Rusty and Eugenia in a car together. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but just seeing them like that together made me think that we were about to find out that they did have something going on at one point. Right. Yeah. I was waiting. I was waiting for it. Same. Same. And it was not, you know, alas, that was not revealed. She's just pissed at him for going rogue. And suddenly she decides she thinks he did it. She thinks Carolyn told him she was pregnant that night and that she was going to keep the baby and that Rusty killed her and their child to protect his first family. His response to that is to kick Eugenia out of the car. This was, again, surprising by how much Eugenia and Carolyn must have been communicating with Mm -hmm. Eugenia saying that she didn't like Carolyn, but like they she obviously knew a lot of personal things about Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Uh So they were talking a lot about this and maybe, you know, she knew more about the relationship even than she said when she was on the stand because of her friendship or communication with Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Right. This mm-hmm. also confirmed for me, I think, that she and Rusty have, or she's been a confidant for Rusty through all of this too, because there were, there was just a very natural back and forth between them. This wasn't the first time they'd talked about this subject. Plus, right. it was interesting to me that she didn't say she told you about the baby. She said she told you she's going to keep the baby, which means that the baby was something he already knew about. Mm-hmm. Right. 
That is a good point. And she knew about Eugenia talked about it like she already knew about it, too. Right. Right. She definitely did. And they're definitely closer than I thought, too. Like you're saying, Eugenia and Rusty. I don't like the theory, though, because I don't feel like his loyalties to his first family are strong enough for that. I mean, he was just telling Carolyn he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And recklessly obsessing over her. I actually think he might welcome the baby news as a way to trap her. Mm -hmm. I just I never saw that family protection thing from him, only from Barbara. Well, that was only what Eugenia suspected. And then he said, get out of the car. It doesn't mean that that is how he felt. Agree. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. When I was watching it, I was for sure that Eugenia has got something to do with the murder. Like, I was almost convinced. Yeah. Me too. Then I remember when she was on the stand, she did admit that she didn't like Carolyn. So I feel like, would she have said that if she had, was involved with it? Like, I don't know. But yeah. It seemed to me that there's probably some, uh, the way they see each other, Eugenia and Rusty, is a little bit different, I think. I think Eugenia considers him. A closer friend than Rusty considers Eugenia to be. Mm. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. So I was like, must have felt like a slap in the face being thrown out of the car because of being honest. So what was the purpose? I think the purpose of the scene was to bring up the information that Rusty probably had known about her pregnancy. Yeah. Right. Before the big reveal for Tommy. Mm. Well, and it established that they have more of a relationship than it seemed, I think. Yeah, that was a really interesting scene that they threw in there because it's the only time we ever see them talking to each other directly, isn't it? I think so, yeah. I think so. Yeah, definitely not in private in any other scenes like that. Right. Strange. The night shot, the tilted night shot is my favorite shot of the whole episode. Me too. Mm. Love it. So good. It was perfection. Yeah. I read that uh, they filmed in LA, but then they had to go to Chicago to film all the outside shots. Oh, to get the city shots? Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. I guess they did that with like a Would they be in the helicopter? helicopter or, uh, yeah, like or a drone probably. Drone. It might have been like a drone shot to get that tilt like that. That's cool. I'd love to know details. I really, really want to work on a film with a drone. Like, I I would, like, pay to just go with a drone operator and watch this okay. happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally. It would, it, would be, it would be cool. Yeah. It really mm-hmm. would be. I hate helicopters, so I don't want to go up there, but I'll watch from afar. Yeah, helicopters seem terrifying to me. Uh, binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> There's a movie that I'm really obsessed with where they use drones a lot. What is it? Uh, it's called Spring. I haven't heard of that one, do you think? The guys that make that movie, I'm like kind of obsessed with them. And I'm like, please, can I just pay you like $10,000 and come watch you film? (laughs) Now Nico's up to bat, questioning Rigo as planned and kicking it off with a bang. After Nico clicks play, we hear everything Rusty said to Liam in the shady visit to the prison. And the jury is hearing all that, of course. Raymond is horrified. Lo even looks a little shocked, despite her bottom of the barrel appraisal of Rusty at this point. (laughs) And Nico summarizes it simply for the jury. Rusty just offered Liam a reduced sentence in return for confessing to Carolyn's murder. Pretty damning evidence, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. But then I completely lost track of what was going on when Nico said the word, is shoe. (laughs) Is shoe. Is shoe. It is so unique, let's say. I don't think anyone in the history of language has ever pronounced that word that way before. Okay, (laughs) wait, though. I think maybe one person has, but it's in a completely comedic way. Yeah, I was going to say, I say that sometimes. I sometimes go, (laughs) issue. I've got an issue. No, that wasn't the same. It's is you. It's you. It's you. you. (laughs) Yeah, that, like a tissue. (laughs) Do you guys know Matt Berry? Yes. I know who he is, yeah. What we do in the shadows. He talks like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Sexual. <laughs> Sexual, yes. <laughs> does he, the actor, say it that way or does his character say it that way? Character. The, character. The character. Well, hold yeah. on, because he says it that way in everything. Everything? He does. Oh, really? But he's doing like a, he's doing a thing, obviously. Like, I think it's like, yeah, it's like an actor. It's his thing. Choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, Rigo swears she didn't know what he was going to do when she took him to the prison. And when she found out, she gave him shit for it. Nico also highlights R- Rusty's previous directives to Rigo when he was in charge of Carolyn's murder case to not share any evidence with anyone aside of him, and especially, specifically, not Tommy or Nico. <laughs> Rusty's questioning here immediately screams Rusty testifying to me. His questions to her are, if you can call them that, I was desperate to prove my innocence at all times of charges I felt wrongly accused of. Is that right? 
<laughs> yeah. And so on and so forth. More statements in his defense like that barely poses questions. But the point he's getting across is he didn't think Tommy and Nico would conduct a fair investigation being prejudiced against him. Nico looks at Tommy and they look pleased as fuck here. Mm -hmm. So that's when I decided that that was perhaps indeed the plan all along. And they now know that they've cleared the way to call him to the stand. But they save that surprise for tomorrow, which is fun. Yeah. I guess they probably thought that he couldn't help himself just being who he is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was always the plan, but they definitely look smug there. Yeah. They were quite pleased. Yeah. I like the interrogation or the questioning, though, that Nico did with Rico. I thought he was very skillful as well. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I agree. It was nice to see him do that. Yeah. And he was concerned that the jury will see Rusty as a hero after rescuing Raymond. Mm -hmm. But then after listening to the tape with Liam and doing the interrogation, Nico like casually throws in like sarcastic, what a hero, which, you know, (laughs) like annuls. Oh, yes, yes. Perfectly annuls the image of the hero from the day before. To me, at least. That was so great. The way he phrased, the way he, his tone of voice. And then later when he's like, well, that's disappointing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. I like that line too. Yeah. 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 Because when she says that, um, that they did, that he wanted, Rusty wanted them specifically not to have the evidence. Yeah. He's totally undermining any kind of positive impression the jury might have made about Rusty. He's a good district attorney in that way. Yeah. Back at home, Rusty's running again, and he's very clearly not doing well mentally or emotionally. He's at least somewhat aware that he was too zealous in his defense of himself. And then Barbara shows us he's taking Ritalin again. How else is he supposed to focus, he asks her. She's more disappointed by yet another lie, this one by omission, which he does quite a bit with her. But you can also see how he seems more, I don't know, the Ritalin kind of explains how he seems physically right now, like how Mm -hmm. like worked up or agitated. I have a hard time explaining this agitated. Yeah. Just generally like worse than he has been maybe. Yeah. He's like a rubber band about to snap. Oh yeah. That's a good description. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good. Very good. We did kind of like decide that maybe he's not going to the pool because it's too public. Oh. Um, And that's why he's been running instead. Okay. In the last few episodes. That's a good point. I'll accept that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's acceptable. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was just curious. I knew that Ritalin was like an ADHD drug, but I was curious to see like what the uh, the side effects were. It's like light cocaine, basically. Yeah. Yeah. When they bring stuff up like that, I feel like sometimes it comes back, you know, that he's been taking drugs and some of the side effects are like mental mood behavior changes, agitation, aggression, mood swings, abnormal thoughts. And things like that. So Yeah. Fits perfectly. It just made me think if he was, let's say he did murder Carolyn, you know, if he was on the drug or even like, I don't know, coming off it. Right. Because we did see that they take them together. So he could have done something just, you know, could have just been a side effect or something. Well, yeah, he's his natural violence is just augmented by this drug right Mm, probably and it's also just like a completely idiotic thing to take before you testify yeah but it might have had more relevance in the past too yeah yeah it apparently makes you very focused when you take it and you don't have a hd or if you're out of the puberty so it has like the opposite effect okay and it basically as as violet said worse like speed so it makes you very focused right but i found it interesting that barbara asked uh rusty what he's doing and rusty was shooting everything that's going on in his mind uh, regarding the trial uh, and barbara was like whatever dude you're taking the medicine again or are you taking ritalin again so she was i don't know not much interested in supporting him anymore like why she sought contact with rusty was to confront him about the medicine not about the trial or how he's doing with that Mm -hmm. then there's a wall at the office where they hang a cut tie on each case they win tommy pulls off the carolyn versus liam reynolds page with her tie on it while remembering that celebration and how she was too uncomfortable with tommy to even allow him to hug her and congratulations Back in court, somehow the judge is shocked by Tommy calling Rusty to testify, and in chambers, Tommy explains the obvious. Rusty maintained his innocence throughout the questioning of Detective Rodriguez and therefore opened himself up to this, as was the deal the judge explained to him clearly when he decided to defend himself. The judge agrees. She does, however, offer him a mistrial, no questions asked, which seems generous 
to me. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand the grounds for that. But Meyer urges him to take the mistrial, but he tells the judge he'll testify. Side note, was Nico sitting on the floor, like, just watching? <laughs> That's what I thought. I think he was either in the chair or in the armchair, but he was, like, pushed into the corner. <laughs> like, you could barely see if him. he was in a chair, they were filming him from, like, above, and he looked like he was, like, it almost, I'd have to go back and see it again, but it almost looked like his knees were up to his, yeah. his chin, and he chin, was pouting. Yeah. <laughs> it looked to me like he was in the corner pouting, like, sitting in the corner. Like a child in timeout. That's what it looked like to me. It's a very good uh, choice of words. He definitely <laughs> looked like a child in the corner. Yes. Did we talk about Tommy's murder board or whatever the heck that was that he had all those cards about everybody's name? I don't think it's Tommy's. I think it's like for the office. Yeah. It's for the office when they win. Oh, okay. So they win. So they put like the card up there and then they put the... They cut the tie. Okay. Got it. In the elevator, Maya tries to storm out and Rusty's arguing her. Rusty thinks having him testify will put Molto's narcissism on full display. And I appreciated Maya pointing out, and yours won't. He's as much a narcissist as Tommy, at least. She asks if he did it on purpose because of his giant fucking ego, and he basically says yes. Maya quits. She's done. <laughs> the way the elevator was closing yes. on yeah. Rusty every single time, I just kept laughing. <laughs> Is that to create more drama, that to have him pushing the doors open, pushing know. him open? I was like, you yeah. could just be standing holding the button on the inside and having this argument with Maya. But <laughs> if you still needed it open or get off the elevator, I couldn't figure out, are you getting on or off or do you still need to go down? I was trying to figure out, why are you standing there pushing the doors open? It was funny. Maybe it's again just showing his kind of like chaotic <laughs> mindset. Right. Mm. Yeah, because then doesn't he get off and she gets on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. In the midst of their fight. I like the blocking though. It it definitely added some action to the scene. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I love Maya here too. Like she's just not taking any shit from him anymore. And yeah. I just loved her honesty with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Maya's played by Gabby Beans and I've really enjoyed her throughout. Yes. And her haircut is very straight, both the bangs. <laughs> it suits her. I love her. Yeah. It does. I love yeah. it. She's amazing. She's been so good. She's probably like my favorite. I love her attitude. I'm a fan, yeah. And her wardrobe yeah. as well. Wardrobes in this is a whole show. Fantastic. Yeah. Barb seems to be learning all of this on the news, shocked in her living room. I cannot imagine the anxiety she and the kids are feeling right now. I really can't. Speaking of the kids, upstairs, Kyle is telling Jaden about dad's new riddle and habit, or old riddle and habit, I guess. And she's appropriately horrified that he's taking it now before he testifies tomorrow. I also Googled the side effects, but you covered it perfectly. <laughs> Rusty is thinking about Carolyn again, a memory when she asked if she could get some of that rusty savage fairy dust. Was she straight up just asking for Ritalin? Yep. That's what I thought. Okay. See, I, I took that as symbolic of his, like, I don't know, lawyer power or something like that. I, nah. But that that makes sense mm -hmm. that it was she was asking for Ritalin. I get that. Rusty's showering again now and then practicing his defense in the mirror, again with the double shots of his face. Nico comes into the office with the world still a color I refuse to wake up for. It's very early. But Tommy's beat him there. <laughs> Unless he's lying and he slept there. Whatever he's been doing, though, his armpits are, like, sweaty as fuck. Yeah. Why is he so freshly sweaty at this hour? What was with that? I don't know. No, but I guess if he came in early, had a coffee, and then dozed off, it will make you, like, sweat when you sleep, when you fall asleep, I guess. Right. Anyway, Tommy's reminiscing about law school and hoping that this one day makes it all worth it. We hear podcasters and journalists criticizing Rusty's decision over a montage of Tommy and Rusty getting ready. Rusty cuts himself shaving, probably a metaphor for hurting himself with this insane defending himself stunt. And then Tommy's marching himself into a room with the ties and ripping his, what is that kind of tie called? I meant to look it up. What was that? Bolo. bolo. It was a bolo tie. I was so confused. I was like, is that an eye patch? Like, <laughs> I did not know what that was. It's like a, it's a cowboy tie. Right. It's a cowboy, yeah. Yeah. And he's wearing it later, so he's he wants it for luck, I guess, is the point of that. Uh, I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Feeling like a cowboy today. Yeah, and it was on a case he won against a man named Spencer Steven. It was his first felony case. So, yeah, just good luck, I guess. I love the shot where you see the blood on Rusty's hands. I thought that was a great little addition to that scene. Mm. Oh, yeah. Is that going to be like a... Premonition? Foreshadowing. In that same scene, he's like sitting 
not quite under, but on the same wall as a photo of Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty. Seems an intentional decision. Mm. That's when Maya calls Rusty and she's cooled off. She's planning to come to court and she's giving him advice. He's obviously going to try to rattle you. Just don't let him make you into an asshole. The jury can't see you like that. He signs off when he sees Raymond walk in. The doctors cleared him. Yay! I know. I'm so excited. It seems like a terrible idea for Raymond's health, but whatever. Yeah. I was excited. Although the doctor did say that he's come out better than he, like, before he even That's went in. True. So I was like, right. hmm. He just needed the pacemaker. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, And obviously Rusty needs him, so it was very cool to see him show up. Yeah. Lowe's probably furious. I didn't see her in the stands either. No. Nah. Um, one thing I wanted to say uh, regarding the couple of scenes that we talked about before, there's like a theme of uh, being, you know, double faced or, or two faced uh, schizophrenic. Mm, mm-hmm. Yes, schizophrenic. Yeah. So Maya suggesting that Rusty is sabotaging himself. Then we have the podcast chatter saying like it's going to be like a schizophrenic uh, performance. And then we see Rusty like double faced in the mirror. Mm-hmm. So it's like 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 a nice team like repeating itself in those three situations that are not the same scene. So three co- consecutive uh, scenes. So I don't know. Made me think. Hmm. Did Jaden was Jaden right saying that Rusty maybe disassociated and forgot? Yeah. <laughs> that he had killed Carolyn. But the scene when he's sa- shaving himself and the music that underlines it. I don't know, it made me, made me feel, it was a positive theme. So it kind of told me that maybe he is innocent. Oh. Because it was, it wasn't like a daunting music, like getting darker, you know, nearing his demise or whatever. It was like a very intense music, Hmm. maybe hinting at his innocence. Interesting. In the courtroom, Tommy initially establishes that Rusty lied to Rigo about his relationship with Carolyn, as well as his attendance at her house the night of the murder. Also that Rusty was in love with Carolyn, and he shows the crazy text he sent that night, including, This is not right. You cannot do this. I will not let you treat me this way. Answer my fucking calls. Who the fuck do you think you are? Treating me this way? Be sleeping upstairs. Jesus, fuck. Just fucking call me, please. And of course, the most painful for his family, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Carolyn had only replied, Rusty, stop. And it was after that last text. We see Barbara take in that text. The kids don't look so great either. Rusty qualifies all of his texts as passion, a dangerous drug, one that Tommy's familiar with too. So consumed with taking Rusty down that he's lost sight of the fact that he has no real evidence. When Rusty asks if he hit Carolyn and Rusty defends that he never struck her because he's not a violent person, he gave Tommy the perfect opening to show the neighbor's camera of Rusty beating the shit out of Ratzer on his porch. Raymond objects to unfair surprise, but the judge allows it. His daughter looks heartbroken as Rusty goes off on a rant, defending himself for acting out of desperation. But I definitely don't think the Ritalin is helping him here. He admits to being volatile, desperate, weak, emotionally unstable, but he is not guilty of killing Carolyn Bolimus. One of those texts also said something like going to get milk, like in quotes, or going out for milk. Oh, right. Yeah. It's just like, oh, just more evidence of him just straight faced lying to Barbara. So <laughs> gross. Yeah. And then Tommy adds another tally in his violence column. Did you try to strangle our medical examiner? Rusty's answer, they're trying to rationalize it, clearly admits to his guilt. And then Tommy asks his best question. Did you decide to do that or did you just snap? And he keeps asking it, and he keeps snapping at the same time, and it's all setting Rusty off. Finally leaving him to ask, what would you do? What would you do? And Mm. Tommy summarizes, so you just snapped. Oh, that was so good. It was, right? The click of the thumb with the music and the scene, Mm. it just, it was so perfect. Yeah. Uh, Tommy was amazing. Yeah. I agree. And I definitely think, like, Rusty was, like, rambling, sort of. I don't know what the right word is, but it felt like a side effect of Ritalin where you just, like, and also just... Yeah. Just Rusty. (laughs) Freaking out, but he just, Mm -hmm. like, kept talking. Yeah, it's also just Rusty, yes. But very bad for him. No, that was brilliant. Yeah. The way he... It was perfect punctuation, and it just really attention-getting and really good point. (laughs) Yeah. Like, did you just snap? And going back to Barbara with the the text about he wants to spend the rest of his life with Carolyn. God, I mean, has this woman been through enough? Like in public place or in the court, she's sitting there and she's hearing that because it's like, I think if you go through something like that, there are certain levels you, you kind of go through and you accept 
And maybe she'd accepted that he'd fallen in love with another woman, but seeing that he'd actually said the words that he wants to spend the rest of his life with her, like he was on the verge of leaving her probably or something. I don't know. It's just just more daggers to the chest. I felt really bad for her. I feel really bad for the kids. Like Barbara's yeah. kind of chosen yeah. to stay with him and that annoys me, but the kids have like no choice in any of this. They're just getting fucked over and hurt. Yeah, that's true. I also found a way Rusty was testifying. You, you, you could hear that he was putting on like a persona in a way. And the way mm-hmm. he all answered the questions, I did. It was like a specific pronunciation of, you know, like a tone of his answers. Yeah. Like I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was happy that in a way that he listens to Maya and did not let Tommy rattle him. So he didn't snap on the stand. True. Right. At least. At least that. Yeah. I feel like he did let him rattle him. But like you said, like not as violently or, you know, the way that he could. In like a reasonably emotional way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't make him snap just to show the jury that he can. Right. Even though he proved his point. But also uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in this scene was, I I found it also amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's so good. I feel like maybe we don't talk about that enough because he's Jake Gyllenhaal and we just kind of take it for granted. But he's been so good. Yeah, this scene especially. Yeah. After court, Nico is thrilled in the car. Tommy is clearly very proud. Rusty's at home remembering Carolyn and him on the bathroom floor, talking about how tortured he is having to be with his family when all he wants to do is be with her. Oh, wow. It's such torturous to be having an affair with a woman and then have a beautiful family at home. Wow. (laughs) Poor Rusty. (laughs) Poor bloke. Seriously. I know. And Barb comes in then, interrupting his daydream, has some questions about the rest of your life text, which Rusty says he doesn't remember writing. Once again, though, she's completely calm and only asks, dare I ask what now? Tommy's on the subway, smiling abyssal creepily. Something else going on in his mind, maybe? I don't know. It seems like he's been smiling literally since he left (laughs) the courtroom. Like, he's just been smirking to himself ever since he walked out. He's beaming. I just took it. Yeah, I just took it he was still proud of himself. Yeah. Yeah. And Nico calling it extraordinary. That, like, just boosted his ego even more. Like, he's just, like, so smarmy and smirky in this. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the contrasting cinematography because the first uh, talk they have in the car, Nico and Tommy, it's pouring rain and it's really dark. Right. And in this scene, the sun is shining right into... Sun is out. Mm. And he's hearing what he wants to hear, what he's always wanted to hear from him. Yeah. So you can almost like hear ah, behind him, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> heavenly choir. He's just hearing applause in his head the whole day. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, he deserved it. Right. Mm -hmm. That was a great fucking interrogation. Yeah. Yeah. It's also interesting because earlier on, you know, he asked for like just the day to make it worth it. And he got the day. And obviously that's about to like come crashing down. But he got his day. That's right. Peter Sarsgaard as well in this episode. Oh, yeah. mm, Obviously, he's been great the whole time, but he just like killed it. He's so good. I kept thinking specifically in the courtroom scene about them being brothers-in-law too. Yeah, I know, know, right? I love that. (laughs) I was like, this is cute. They're they're gonna like do this kind of emotional, intense scene, and then like Mm -hmm. what go to dinner with Maggie or something. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) have beers and barbecue. Yeah, (laughs) I'd love to know if she came to set. Yeah, watch them. I was just thinking that too. Sure, she did. I was like, Maggie's off to the side watching them both. Yeah. Be so fun. She should have popped into the courtroom in the background, just like sitting there in the court. Yeah. (laughs) Or in the jury. (laughs) That would be cool. Yeah. And then Tommy gets home and finds his house ransacked. He is, of course, soaked from the rain. But that aside, he's looking around the house, shutting windows until his cat shows him the real centerpiece. Mm hmm. I was so relieved that the cat didn't jump out the window. <laughs> yeah. Well, the rain would probably keep it in. Like, my cat kind of escaped on our patio the other day, but it was torrentially downpouring. So I was like, eh, I'll just watch you. And it was true. The rain kept, hmm. it was like an invisible fence <laughs> kept him in. All right. But yeah, the fireplace poker has shown up on his counter with a printed note on it. Go fuck yourself. Mm-hmm. So does this mean Tommy did it? I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many, too many thoughts about this. Let's hear him. I want your thoughts. It looks very clean, though. It doesn't yeah. look like they left the blood on it. No, it's been wiped clean. Got so many questions. There's a lot of questions. I have one last note, and then I want to hear everyone's thoughts. He's holding on to his cat very tightly, and it reminded me, like I said earlier, of like Buffalo Bill holding his little dog Aww. in Silence of the Lambs. It's just like creepy. You know what it reminded me of? What? I actually thought of uh, James Bond Blofeld with his cat. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Petting> the cat. <laughs> 
Like the cat inclusion. Tommy looked pretty, pretty scared in that moment, I thought. Yeah. yeah. The way that final scene was staged was so good about building tension because they had that shot, that point of view. It looked to me like a point of view shot from upstairs looking down at Tommy as he's walking through his house, Mm -hmm. which made me think there was somebody still in the house like Mm -hmm. lurking. And I thought someone was going to attack him or shoot him or something like that before he finds the the fireplace poker. Mm -hmm. Just um, really well staged with the ransack, with the rain and the window open. Created a lot of tension. Good job. And then, of course, it's to the credits with the sound of rain downpouring. Yeah. Such a great sound for the credits. Yeah. Gives you a really good final vibe of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. I was just had so many thoughts about the scene that I've kind of jumbled them all in my brain. But let's say Rusty planted that there. And it's, you know, it is Rusty who killed Carolyn. Like, are the police going to come, like, in the exact next scene in that last episode? And, you know. Yeah. They've set it up so... Uh, that's going to happen. But then there's also that note that says, go fuck yourself. So the go fuck yourself sounds a lot like Rusty. It does. But the, whoever it is didn't give it to the like medical examiner or the police. Exactly. So what does it mean? That's why I feel like it's not Rusty that put it there because he could literally have just gone, planted it somewhere where someone could find it and it would be like the trial would be done already. You know what I mean? So mm. yeah. I think Helen, Rachel, and I all have sort of similar versions of a pretty tight theory. Do you want to tell it, Helen? We want to hear it for sure. Yeah, the theory is that the person who had put the poker, the fire poker, was either Michael or Dalton Caldwell, so his father. Mm, That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. So the theory is that Michael hasn't left Carolyn's house after Rusty got in. He stayed and he listened. And he heard Carolyn saying that she's pregnant and she's going to keep the baby. So he went in to confront Carolyn because he was pissed. Mm. That's very good. She wants to keep that baby, but not him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he probably then wanted to know why the new baby and not him. And probably not meaning to, but he pushed her. So that's why she hit the mantle. Mm. And then he grabbed a poker and then probably called his father, Mm -hmm. who then helped him clean up the scene because we were we've been hinted at the idea that there were two parts of the murder like the emotional one and then the cleanup part Mm -hmm. right also michael and uh dalton also are each other's alibis right yeah and um, And they probably michael had googled Mm -hmm. yeah exactly michael had googled the yeah the bunny davis case and they probably would have known that that would point right to rusty yep right which would be another benefit to them because michael was angry with rusty yeah. Yeah. One thing I do question about that theory, though, I find it a very good theory, is that why would you plant it in Tommy's house? And why does it say go fuck yourself? I thought it was a threat because earlier we see two different outbursts from Michael's father. And one of them was when he finds out that Rusty's going to represent himself. And I feel like there was something between Michael's father and Tommy that we haven't seen where there was a promise that they would protect Michael. And he keeps Mm. saying, you said you would protect him or you said you would. He says something like that as they're pulling him out of the court too. So I Mm. think he feels like things have turned badly for Michael. Mm. So I thought it was a threat towards Tommy because Tommy didn't hold up his end of the bargain. Right. So do you think it's the actual fire poker? I do. My idea of the poker is more of uh, Dalton being scared the police or the investigation will actually check out their alibis and check out Michael's testimony. So he's giving the murder weapon for Tommy to end the trial. But the go fuck yourself is because he was not able to shield Michael the way he promised. Yeah. So it's like, go fuck yourself, but please end it. Okay. So this is the murder weapon. Yeah. And you know. I like that. That makes sense too. Do you think that the fire poker has like Rusty's fingerprints planted on it or something? I think they could easily do that at this point. Yep. If they wanted to, because that would really seal the deal on everything. Mm -hmm. And he possibly did it with the skin under the nails anyway. So. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like that theory a lot. It's so good. You guys are so smart. One thing I also thought of, though, is why would they fuck around with this house? Like, it's been, like, torn apart looking for something. Just as, like, an angry outburst of, like, fuck this guy or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Might as well. What about Kyle, then? You think maybe Kyle saw, like, what happened? 
I feel like there's something more with Kyle involved. I don't know. I think Kyle might be a red herring. Yeah, he could be. But I felt the same when I saw it. I, I was much more suspicious of Michael and assuming that Michael killed her and his father helped him cover it up. So yeah. I'm on board. I'm on board with that, but I'm still, I have too, I have more questions about why they would put it there. I, I don't know. But I reckon you might be right. Uh, the poker? Yeah, I just don't. Yeah, I think what Helen said is pretty spot on. I think that makes sense. Why does Tommy look so scared? Yeah, that's a good question. He's probably not quite figuring out what the point of it is yet because he's like, right. it's just creepy to suddenly have the murder weapon sitting there. Mm-hmm. So he's got to put all that together. What do you think he can do with it, though? What do we think Tommy can actually do with the murder weapon? He'd have to plant evidence, I think. Yeah, he would have to plant. He'd have to have DNA. Yeah, so it would have to be up to him, right, to actually sort this whole thing out because Mm -hmm. I don't know where he'd plant it, though. He would have to do something shady at the end there to finalize it. Should he have to try and get, like, to Rusty's house or put put it where all his other tools are, like in the garage or something like that? That is a good question what Tommy will do with this. If he's going to call the police and make them, you know, secure the scene and take it. Yeah. Or if he's going to take the situation, like use the situation and put it somewhere in Rusty's possession. Yeah, it's yeah. really like almost like he has a choice similar to what Carolyn had where she found evidence that didn't support what she wanted and then had to make a choice. Am I going to make it support what I, how I want this to go or am I going to do the right thing? And I, mm-hmm. like in a way, I kind of wonder if Tommy's going to do the right thing because mm-hmm. that would be that would throw us off a little, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that would throw us off a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think him being so high on the win that day mm-hmm. that he will do the right thing and call the police. I wonder if he will know, though, like if that's like the actual poker that did it or like I guess he'd give it to the car, uh, the medical examiner guy, maybe to see if there's anything on it. Yeah, I don't think it would be the medical examiner. It'd be like police, whatever, task force. Forensics. That, forensics, there we go. Right. So he could possibly just take it somewhere to see if it's the actual. Although, I guess if it is Michael and his dad, they could have planted his, Rusty's DNA on it somehow. Or maybe, yeah, like we were saying, Tommy's going to have to do that for himself. Yeah, I think that they probably wouldn't have been able to get that part done i think they probably just wiped it clean and left it there for tommy to make a choice on mm-hmm. it and the threat was saying like you better do this kind of we're not a threat but like the go fuck yourself like yeah. another person that talks to him like that though it's the enemy be, like the medical exam yeah, yeah. maybe he put maybe he already put the fingerprints on or whatever you know for him oh that's a good point actually because we had kind of like dropped him off he wasn't really featured in this episode yeah mm-hmm. So we're ruling out Rusty. Is that what we're saying? I think so. Yeah. I think I have. I think I've ruled out Rusty. I haven't quite ruled him out yet. Unless all of this is red herrings just to throw us off of Rusty. Yeah. And bring him back in the in the finale with something. Yeah. I just feel like the only thing that's when I think about it putting me off Michael is that we saw him saying like he'd be better off dead. Like, is that too obvious? Or This is what annoys me with my brain because I'm like, I throw myself off things because I look. <laughs> I'm looking too far into it. No, we all do. I mean, I think also he is just a kid. So like if he did kill his mother, I don't think that it was like a premeditated thought out thing that he was going to go do. So he wasn't like thinking ahead on all of those details at the time. Yeah, I think both can be true that he, in his anger, said that in a text to her previously and then accidentally kills her because of something totally different later. Mm. What do you think about now? What do you think about the meeting that uh, Michael set up with he and Rusty in that? random warehouse thing why do you think he did that well michael had all those pictures of rusty he had video of rusty so the plan i think between him and his dad was to frame rusty so telling rusty i have pictures and it he already sent him to the cops right at that point yeah so Mm -hmm. i think it was just threatening him right or or just saying i got you maybe there he was hoping that rusty's gonna say something that would uh incriminate him oh like he was recording him right yeah yeah maybe interesting now i can't stop thinking about michael and his dad (laughs) it also just goes with the whole narrative of sprinkling in that we think it's rusty or Mm -hmm. really throws you off because the kid is blaming rusty for it from early on there's a thought i've had as i've watched this whole show which is that this show is so good at creating reasonable doubt within the audience yeah yeah (laughs) just the whole time 
every scene almost. I mean, all of these flashbacks with that Rusty has himself of him being aggressive towards Carolyn. It's like, it's making us think, okay, well, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is the best whodunit I've seen in a really long time because it still could totally flip or, or turn or, yeah. Or, yeah. or other details yeah. that maybe we dismissed or other details we picked yeah. up on, but have now moved on from, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's so well done. Yeah. They've planted enough details of almost everyone in the cast. Mm -hmm. I think we should go back to Eugenia a little bit. I'm still pretty suspicious of her, to be honest with you. And I've been thinking a bit about all the scenes that we've seen her in, and even like what Helen, you said about, I think it was on episode six recording, where you said that usually um, the stories that are like this, where you don't know who done it, usually they're shown like within the first episode, or I think you were talking about a book yeah. as well. Like in books, they're usually introduced pretty early on. Mm, right. She's in like one of the first scenes, I guess, in their office. Yeah, in the conference room, I think. Yeah. Mm. They're talking about who's going to take over the case, et cetera. Like she's in there. And the scene in the car in this episode really made me kind of like, hmm, like. It was weird, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we'd see this extra scene of them. Yeah. Just randomly in the car. Like, I feel like it was there for a reason. Right. And what did she say? What was her wording? Like, I was wrong about it. I had it wrong, right? Yeah. I had it a little wrong, yeah. Yeah, maybe I had it wrong. That's a weird thing to say. I'm with you on that. But I remember finding it very, like, strange statement. Yeah, yeah. I took from it that. What she had all wrong was covering for them and not uh, reporting the case to or the relationship to HR. So that was what I thought about. But if you yeah. put it in a different context, it's get interesting. Yeah, it's like she, she <laughs> thought removing Carolyn from the situation would free Rusty up from this mental prison. Yeah. Like, I think she liked him. I think I've maintained all along that I think she could have had mm -hmm. you know, a thing for him. I'm going to stick with that. And I was always suspicious of her. I do also think that she definitely has like a crush or had a crush on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I got the vibe of that just when you look back at when she was talking to Raymond and she was like, can you please like do me a favor and tell Rusty that I really don't have an intent of testifying against him. And right. that makes me think that she, she holds him to a pretty high, you know. And she's hyper aware of him as we see in her memories, you know, which again yeah. could just be normal. Like, wait a minute, are they dating? And you'd be like into the gossip of it all or yeah. she's really into it. I also had to think of Tommy suggesting to Nico that Eugenia was a little bit in love with Rusty and we had chalked it all up, or I did at least, to Tommy being, you know, a jealous little bitch. Tommy, right. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe, who knows, maybe maybe I was very uh, cliche in my thinking. <laughs> it might, it's probably a bit of both. Yeah, they set it up that way. Both can be true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I remember noticing Eugenia and I was very interested in her just because she, I noticed her early on, but nothing came of it early, like in the mm -hmm. first two or three episodes. And then when they brought her into it, I again was my, my interest in her was heightened and I still don't really know what it all means, but I am interested in the part she plays. Yeah. I just think it feels almost like she was jealous of their relationship. Like when she was on the witness stand, you know, she says that she really didn't approve of their relationship. Right, right. right. It was unprofessional. And she didn't like Caroline either. She was pretty adamant. Like she was like, yep, I didn't like her. My only like standards for trying to figure out who, or for suspecting somebody at any given moment is that they haven't been put in the spotlight as a suspect. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like the best one for that. Mm -hmm. You know, she's been there, but nobody's actually like, I mean, Carolyn must have been pretty damn shocked if she did kill her. Like, yeah. <laughs> violently. I, I mean, like, what? Where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. So it works. I like it. It's surprising. One other thing I thought about that um, connected to Eugenia was when we were talking about the poker and the note on it that said, go fuck yourself. She's another one who has said, go fuck yourself to Tommy. To Tommy, right. Yeah. yeah. Is that is that the only person that's told him to go fuck himself? Because it's literally exactly the same. Go fuck yourself. Well, I think you guys were talking about the coroner too. Yeah. Oh my guy. Yeah. When did Kuma guy tell him to go fuck himself? 
I mean like every conversation maybe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went back to when they went to the courthouse and he was sort of like training him. Yeah. Because I wanted to see if he said it then. But he didn't say that. He was just like, you're a fuckwit. <laughs> maybe when he gave him the file in the hallway. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, he says something. No, he didn't He didn't say it there either because I went back. Okay. <laughs> maybe we're all just remembering the constantly implied go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I was wondering that as well. Because I went, like, I went back and I was like, who's told him to go fuck himself? Did you go back uh, to the scene in the morgue when Rusty went in? No, no, I didn't go back to that one, no. In my memory, that was the moment. Yeah. I only went back to scenes with Tommy, like, in particular. I didn't go look at, like, scenes with just, like, Rusty or... I mean, it's not out of character for Kuma Guy if it was Kuma Guy, obviously. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> we can accept that pretty easily. But I think that it's probably intentionally planted as exactly what she said to him in a previous scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To Tommy. Um, Eugenie to Tommy. I feel like not many people would remember that either. I think they're doing a good job. Mm. If it is her, like she's been pretty in the background. Right. Well, and it's almost like in the first episode when they introduced her, like there's almost no point to her be sitting in that scene. She's just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's like staff. Like, I don't even remember if she has a line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have noticed. So again, it's like what Helen said. It's like establishing her presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though she didn't have an active part in that scene. What I'm curious about is, is if Eugenia is involved, if she's even guilty, some of her language in the car was interesting to me because she's implying that she was wrong about Rusty, that maybe Rusty did it. Yeah. So if she did it and she knows, well, then she would know that he did not. It kind of messes with my head. So she's not saying I was wrong and you did it in this case. If she killed him, she's saying I was wrong this didn't fix your Carolyn obsession, so you like like me back. Mm. Like I killed her to get rid of this problem in your head, and yet it hasn't changed anything. Is that that's how I read it? If she killed him, yeah. So the stuff that she says right after that fits too, because she she then says, "You guys probably know the phrasing better than me, but yeah, like you were addicted, it was ruining your life, like mm -hmm. uh, you needed a way out." Essentially, is kind of what she says. I don't remember the exact phrasing, but that's the implication that she's saying is like you you needed out of this right. problem, so that she saved Rusty in a way. She saved him from his addiction, okay. and now she's realizing. And because even as it goes on, she says like she told you about the baby, and she mm -hmm. she wanted to keep that baby. Yeah, when she's talking in the testifying in the courtroom, she says that um, he was becoming like undone and like obsessive with Carolyn, and then yeah, in the car she also says. Something along the lines that Carolyn was like a drug and that he had mm -hmm. an addiction and that addictions destroyed lives. So like mm -hmm. you guys said, I wonder if she was thinking, well, this will help you. Right. Destroy the drug and you can't. Yeah. I think that even that part, though, when she's talking about the kid, I think can work because I think if you think about her as having killed Carolyn, then it's like she's realizing, oh, maybe you really wanted the kid. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And like... I was trying to kill her so that you could go back to your family and her being pregnant would have messed that up for you. Yeah. Okay. But if I killed her, uh -huh. then you don't have to worry about this kid and this whole new problem with Carolyn and pulling, right. sucking you further into the addiction by having a kid with her. So like, yeah. I think it could totally read that way. It checks out. The way she said it in the show was, um, she told you she was going to keep the baby. That's what happened, isn't it? Or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I was watching that, I thought what that meant was that that made him snap. Right. I think that's what Rusty thinks she's implying. And that's why he kicks her out of the car. I think that's why he gets mad at her. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And that's what they want the audience to think if this right. is what happened. Because it can be read, you know, both ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the whole uh, tying up of Carolyn. So that would suggests that Eugenia did it to help Rusty but wanted to put it yes on Liam so Liam mm -hmm. yeah. okay and she's the best one for that because she knew the date it doesn't make sense that Rusty got like angry and killed her on the same date but Eugenia would have come out on that date specifically for the reason like she's planned to kill her and she's planned to cover it up and she knows that this date will work yeah nobody yeah. else does it really check out yeah that would point to Liam if it was if people were paying attention to the date yeah right all these other theories are like violent anger suddenly killing and the date makes no sense for that right mm -hmm. it's just like the craziest coincidence of all time right that's right but with her the date actually could make sense because she planned yeah mm. 
And you have to wonder, like, if part of that, too, is that she wanted to uncover that Carolyn lied about the case, about the Liam case, because if she if another murder happens, then it proves that there was somebody else involved. There had to have been Mm -hmm. because Liam's in prison. So two birds with one stone. Yeah. Yeah. And with her not liking Carolyn, you kind of wonder, like, well, what's the basis for that? And maybe it was because she knew that she had covered things up in that case. I don't know. Yeah. Just for the record, another thing I've maintained from the beginning is Carolyn is kind of a shitty human being. Um, but we never, we didn't ever get like any more color on her, which is too bad. I feel bad for her because she got violently murdered. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also like wondering, going back to Eugenia, you have to wonder like if she even knew Rusty was there that night until after the fact. Yeah. Right. Definitely could be that way because it seems like from the very beginning that she didn't want anything to point to Rusty mm-hmm. at all by it. obviously if she if she did in fact murder Carolyn then she didn't want to although but now she does I think now she's like turned on him yeah I think so as well do you think it's maybe because he told her to get out of the car and that was it but even before that she used words like obsessed and undone at court that she did not need to be his mm-hmm. I think she's mm-hmm. seeing a more clear view before that and certainly by now mm. I think she's just trying to cover her ass now and is willing to use whatever she needs to. I think the glamour is coming off him. Mm, That makes sense. Yeah. Well, now I'm wondering what she thinks Tommy is going to do exactly with the poker. I think she knows him well enough that she assumes he'll play off the evidence. I don't know. That's right, because she thinks, well, basically everyone thinks Tommy is a a twat, but, like, (laughs) he is. You know, she even says, like, in one of the scenes to Tommy, she says, like, you know, something about being unprofessional and, like, recusing himself. Mm -hmm. She knows that he will do what it takes, I think, to win. I wonder if uh, just the presence of a murder weapon is advantageous to prosecution because then they can send into analysis, and and not not only DNA analysis, but also, like, splatter, blood splatter pattern, and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. sometimes from crime scenes, you can determine how tall... Yeah, the, the attacker was, or mm. how much energy they needed to, you know, hit someone. If they're left or right-handed, and all the things, all the details. Yeah, so having the word murder weapon is always like a giant, giant plus for the prosecution. Yeah. I would think that we would also introduce a fair bit of confusion and doubt as to where yeah. it came from in this case. Like, I don't know what they're going to say about where it came from. Because if someone told me, if I was the jury and they're like, this showed up at my house, I'd be like, okay, there's another person out there doing something related to this. Like, yeah. So I don't know what they're going to say. Y'all, I wonder if we'll see, I bet we'll see the entire murder scene in the last episode. I hope so. Mm-hmm. That would be good. I do hope so, too. Yeah. It'd be very disappointing if we didn't at this point. And it could be that an alternative uh, explanation is put forward that seems to be seems to lock everything in and then we get like the visuals of what really happened or something like that right Mm -hmm. that could be interesting too yeah yeah i wonder now though if tommy will figure out the truth and that's how we'll get the truth in the last episode you know like what tommy will do with it right you know what would be absolutely insane like i had a thought that what if he does get charged with the murder and like we as the audience know who did it but yeah (laughs) like in the show they they think it's rusty and he goes to jail for it right that's true that would be really interesting yeah and sad but you know (laughs) (laughs) i don't know maybe maybe he could do some some time that might be good for him yeah maybe (laughs) (laughs) yeah true community service would be good for him maybe (laughs) I just rewatched the movie Clue. <laughs> and if you if you know in that movie where it's like they set it up so that it could have multiple endings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was comparing that to the show. Like they've set it up so that you could watch it from certain perspectives. And when you get to the point that we're at right now, multiple people could probably line up to be the person in the end. And it's just whichever one they choose yeah. to be the killer in the end is the one that they go with. Yeah. I mean, I think the date is like we've said a million times is the one piece that doesn't really fit with the other people that we've suspected. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that I can't remember if we've talked about, but there are multiple um, flashes to Carolyn. um, And I can't remember now if they're supposed to be coming from someone's brain or if we're just getting them as the audience. But she's she looks to be alone in her house. 
And she, she's looking out the windows like she's heard a sound, like she's afraid, and she's holding her poker. So I feel like mm. that shows probably that she was still alive when Rusty left. And the murder mm. part came after because she's, I think, alone and somebody was outside her home and she heard a noise. She got a poker and then whatever happens after that happened. Was it Michael's recording? No, it's it's like flashback flashes that they've shown us. I feel like she was standing in the window in some of his footage. Yeah, she was. But I'm not sure about the poker, though. Maybe it was in one of Rusty's dreams that we saw her with the poker. Yeah, there was a weird shot in um, in her house that did seem like it was something from a dream or like one of those moments where Rusty was like imagining, just imagining her in different scenarios, I guess. Like it, it seemed like earlier in maybe episodes one, two, three, like in the pool, he was having those flashes and stuff like that. Yeah, or like a nightmare that he had. He had a couple of those over the episodes. Yeah, that could be. I wonder if a lot of those flashes are actually going to come together to build yeah. Yeah. the sequence of what happened in the final episode or if they're going to be changed. Yeah, we have so many different takes on it. It's very interesting if we're going to see this. Right. I kind of wish I had time to just go edit all of the flashes together and see if we could recreate <laughs> the murder sequence. <laughs> One thing I was, when I was just re-watching, um, Helen, I remember you talking about the, what was it, Scottish malt carpet. Did we ever yeah. get anything else from that? No. No, actually. No, yeah, because I was thinking, I don't know if that will ever come up again, but it just made me wonder. Although, where did they find that? Was that on her body? That was on Carolyn's body, yeah. It's like fibers that matched it or something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carpet fiber, yeah. I also find it interesting from the whole plot point of view is that we never see the confrontation or the discussion of Carolyn and Eugenia after Eugenia had seen them, mm. had seen Carolyn and uh, and Rusty making out. So we didn't know what was the tone of that discussion. No, yeah. It's been kept from us, so, you know. Mm -hmm. We might see it. Yeah, I'm almost convinced by going back to Michael. I don't know, I have to think about the first time Rusty went to the house and Michael had like no reaction to Rusty. Mm. He was like standing in the window, right? He even like came in and Rusty stood up and, you know, offered his condolences and, and Michael was like, thank you. So there was like no recognition of, of Rusty, whereas in court, he's like agitated and it's like, you killed my mother and I wanted to see the man when I went to the silo to see him. I went to see the man who killed my mother and yeah, Ooh. at the house, he had like no reaction to Rusty. So that does read kind of like he hadn't planned, like him and his dad or Michael or whatever hadn't planned to frame Rusty yet. You know, like maybe they leaned hard into that after they came to the house and they got scared. Maybe they uh, didn't expect Rusty because they had already talked to the police. Yeah. Michael didn't have like a prepared reaction. If it was him with his father, uh, they were more preparing to be confronted with Rusty, maybe in court. That makes sense. Yeah. And they weren't expecting him at home. So that's why Michael was like, yeah, thank you for the condolences and had like no reaction in the face or little reaction in the face to you seeing Rusty. Whereas in court, he's like, you know, I know you did it. I saw you there. You killed my mother. It's my impression. You killed my mother. So he's very like aggressive almost about it. So right. that's like a contrast that makes me, you know, scratch my head a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty notable. Another thing I thought about with Michael kind of ties into what I was saying earlier about the flashes I remembered from Carolyn looking out the window, looking nervous and having a poker in her hand, because I wanted to go back and find where I saw those. So in episode four, Rusty has a dream sequence where there are flashes of Carolyn in a nightshirt. She's grabbing a poker and she's looking out her window like she hears something and is afraid. But this is from Rusty's dream, so we can't necessarily trust it. Right. But in episode five, when Tommy is looking through Michael's pictures, there is a wider shot taken through Carolyn's window of Carolyn in her nightshirt looking through her, what looks like her front door window, maybe. These pictures are real. They're not in Rusty's head. I don't see the poker in the picture, but if she's in her nightshirt, that implies the picture was taken after Rusty left, which would disprove what Michael said about leaving after Rusty went inside. Maybe Michael was still there. Or <laughs> this could be a shot taken from another night, like when Kyle was on his bike. Right. So either way, but I thought that was an interesting observation. 
Yeah, that is really, that definitely adds a little, like, because if it, if it does turn out to be Michael, then I think that would be correct that he probably did lie Mm -hmm. and stay there later or returned. I think he's lying about a lot. Yeah, I think he's probably lying about a lot too. Yeah. I don't think we've, have we ever said anything about, well, no, I guess that's not relevant because it was in Rusty's dream. But there's that like weird shot in Rusty's dream where um, she looks out the window and sees Kyle's bike go by. Mm-hmm. Right. But again, it's in Rusty's dream. So yeah, like through the through the glass in, in the door. But really, you know what I think about with Rusty's dream is he's probably dreaming this after he looked at those pictures. Correct. So a lot of those are impressions that have been made in his subconscious that are coming out in his in his dream. So he's probably piecing a timeline together of something that may have happened based on what he saw in those pictures. Right. Yeah, that's exactly why it makes it so hard to know what's really happening. And Yeah. And we don't see the timestamps on the pictures. So we don't know when those pictures were taken. Like they had to tell us that the Kyle pictures were taken weeks ago. Right. Yeah. I remember us being confused about that because it was like, well, I guess he's been, Michael's been over there taking pictures on many nights, not just the one night. So. Right. Good point though. Really good point. Yeah. I'm still, I'm very torn between these two, like between these two theories, Michael Clayton versus Eugenia. I think they both make sense. (laughs) Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Thank you, David E. Kelly. Seriously. Seriously. (laughs) This is fun. I feel like every day I have some new thought about it. And I'm just like, wait, what if it's that person? And then I try to make sense of it. And I'm like, just stop. Just stop. You're not going to figure this out. Just wait. Yeah. (laughs) It's too good. You won't figure it out. It'll just be rusty. Hey, he'll just be the killer. And that's it. (laughs) (laughs) It is rusty this whole time. (laughs) But I do wonder why would rusty plan? No, yeah. Yeah. The poker. If his DNA is on it, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, but it would be it would be hilarious. Rusty's pretty low on my list now. I think he's possible. I think it's definitely possible that it was him. Yeah, I'm also still wondering about the glove compartment backer or whatever he did in the glove compartment. And yeah, what the fuck? Why they're like complicating the story? It's the tracker. Yeah, if they even follow up or what. But that was regarding Barbara, so right, Barbara and her boyfriend probably. Just him being controlling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious if we're going to see like a, an altercation between Clifton and Rusty, which would be like kind of insane at this point. But but I'm into it. I'd like to see it. They, it could be, yeah, like all of the things that they've put as red herrings also make sense. They're not like yeah random insertions of things to be like, oh, to throw you off. It's like, mm-hmm. no, it makes sense for the character and the plot and mm-hmm. what's going on with them personally, even if it doesn't have anything to do with the case. Yeah. Didn't you guys, um, I don't remember who said it, but somebody said in an earlier podcast episode that the actors didn't even know who the killer was Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. until like it, that was kept from them yeah. while they were shooting episodes one through seven, which is so interesting to me because that means whoever is guilty is not acting into that guilt. Well, and every actor has to act suspicious a little bit. Right. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if they haven't changed it just because when I read it, they said it's changed quite a bit. So yeah i just figured that it would have just because also people know the ending you know sometimes people might not have been as interested i guess if they already knew like what happens yeah do you think they filmed m- multiple endings and then the actors will find out who's the killer when they watch it <laughs> <laughs> that'd be amazing i read that they thought about it but they didn't they were gonna do two endings but they just shot one okay i think i've heard about that in another show though them doing that also because filming was like paparazzi and stuff and like spoilers and shit. So they filmed a couple different ways so it wouldn't like leak. Mm-hmm. I remember Game of Thrones would do that too. Maybe that's what it was. They would shoot dummy scenes to throw off people who were looking around. Oh, fuck. Well, I can't believe we can't. I have to wait until the fucking thing comes out. I just want to watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> First, come find us on Above the Garage Pod on Instagram because Kimberly puts a lot of cool shit up there and you should follow us. Otherwise, I think that's a wrap on our discussion of episode seven. Oh, the penultimate episode. I forgot to say that the entire time we were recording. (laughs) Come back next week for the finale discussion. We can't wait. We haven't seen it yet, but we're really excited. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.